He likes to be called Little Pebble and he wants people to believe he's a man of God. But don't. His real name is William Castellia Cam and he's evil. Back in the 1980s, he set up a doomsday cult claiming to his followers he could speak to the Virgin Mary. He then spun the lie that God wanted him to have multiple wives so he could repopulate the earth. But this very creepy man's real ambition was to have sex with underage girls. When he was caught, he went to prison for a decade. Now he's out and there are substantial fears he's up to his old tricks. This is the headquarters of the Order of St. Charbel, just outside Nowra on the New South Wales south coast. It is home to a doomsday cult whose unlikely and strange little leader promises salvation but instead destroys lives. Curious to see if it still all looks the same. And... For Stephanie Hinricks, it was a place of fear, deprivation and, worst of all, repeated sexual abuse. It has been more than 20 years since Stephanie escaped here and this is her first time back. I knew from the moment I drove in here it wasn't right, it didn't feel right. When you first got here as an 11 year old, this was meant to be heaven on earth. Is, is that what you thought it was? No. Um, initially when we drove through the gates, I thought why does God need barbed wire fences? It makes no sense at all. And was the barbed wire to keep people in or keep people out? Both keep the cult members in and keep the public out. What the barbed wire can't do is keep Stephanie quiet. She's reliving the horror of her childhood to make this stark warning to save others. Her abuser, William Castellia Cam, remains a terrible danger. He abused you? Yes. From the age of 14, I will never forget it. So he's a pedophile? Yes. William Cam was sent to jail for the better part of a decade for his sex crimes. Now this rapist, who claims to be a prophet and a pope, and who calls himself Little Pebble, is free. And the alarm bells are ringing. It's easy to dismiss him as ludicrous, but how menacing, how dangerous is he in your opinion? To me, all child sex offenders are dangerous. Cam's no different. Anyone that can prey on the most vulnerable of our society, we need to be afraid. He is a liar, a cheat and a sex offender, pretending to be a man of God. Basically, he used divine guidance as a license to offend. And now, unrepentant and self-righteous, Little Pebble is at it again hunting young women to rebuild his so-called royal harem. What would you like to see happen to William Cam? <laughs> happen to him? Well, I want him imprisoned again forever. Wearing the cloak of a holy man, Cam has been grooming and destroying families for decades. Stephanie was just eight or nine when she and her sisters first met the false preacher in her hometown of Munich in the late 80s on one of his world tours. And when you reflect on it, did he target you? Oh, yes. Yes. We weren't a wealthy family, so he took us places and it was like, oh, goodness, OK, this man is spoiling us. Eventually, when he came to Germany, he would stay in our little apartment and sleep with my older sister, because at that point it was, she's going to be my wife. How did he target your mum? He promised her salvation. Stephanie's mum, Ingrid, was totally sold. She allowed her 17-year-old daughter, Bettina, to marry the then 41-year-old William Cam, before eventually moving the entire family to Australia to join Little Pebble's cult. 
Back then, she believed the already married Cam was a true prophet. Today, she's too ashamed to show her face. Did it feel right? Did it feel yeah, right for your 17-year-old daughter to be married to a man who was already married? Not afterwards. At this point, we was not able to think very clear. I know that now. We didn't know that then. Tonight is the first time the Hinrichs family has spoken out against the evils of this charlatan to reveal how he very nearly destroyed them all until brave Stephanie fought back, busted open the cult and sent Cam to jail. William arrived at the airport with a minivan and we drove for three hours to Nara and then into the bush and I'm like, oh my goodness, where are we going? It was 1991 and little wonder Stephanie felt overwhelmed. She was just 11, had just flown in from Germany and spoke little English. But she and her family were about to be reunited with eldest sister Bettina, who had flown to Australia the year before to be with Cam. She was pregnant with his child. Were you in love with him? I was madly in love with him. I was madly in love with him. He was my world. As Little Pebble, Cam convinced believers from around the world that each month the Virgin Mary would appear at his holy compound, but she was only visible to him. I see rockets, rockets that are flying to the United States and to Australia and to Europe. Cam claimed, through Mary, God told him to choose 12 queens and 72 princesses. The little pebble really would have 72 princesses and, and 12 queens. As William Cam unashamedly told 60 Minutes reporter Jeff McMullen in 1997, his divine duty was to repopulate the earth after a promised Armageddon was to wipe out mankind. That's adultery. You're a married man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be right. It is adultery. The, it would be adultery in the eyes of the world. God can still suspend the law. Uh, and uh, he doesn't suspend the law for Tom, Dick and Harry, as Father would say, in every but person on the earth. But he does for William. You were committed. Yes, because I was asked by God. We'll go to Mummy and ask Mummy, she might have it, OK? One of your many children? Yeah, one of the many children. How many children what Cam you? neglected to tell Jeff McMullen or Bettina, who he would go on to have six children with, was that his real, warped desire was to marry underage girls. Tragically, Stephanie was one of them. She was just 13 when Cam started his disgusting dance of deceit and sexual pursuit, writing to her in the guise of the Virgin Mary, declaring Stephanie would be his next bride. I started getting those kind of letters when I was 13. The Virgin Mary's chosen me, and it's very special. It means that I get to live in a castle in Germany. And so at 13, I thought, oh my goodness, I get to be a princess. Yes, I would like that. But the reality was less fairy tale and more menacing. Through the letters, Stephanie was told she would have a child with Cam, but it would not be an immaculate conception, as was first offered. God now wanted her to have sex with her sister's husband. So I went running to Mum. And the sword is sparkling. Help me, I don't want to do this. You have to do this, it's God's will. And I was just beside myself. When William Cam wanted to marry your other daughter, he started approaching this topic when she was 13. Did you feel that was right? God, yeah, we just, we just believed too. It came from heaven. We thought it came from heaven. You believed that this was the desire 
Of heaven, yeah. Of heaven, not yeah. the desire of a man. Yes, at this point, I believed it was heaven. Cam's manipulation of the young Stephanie was cruel. He urged her to write to the Virgin Mary to seek advice if she was confused or anxious. In the process, unwittingly revealing all her fears and secrets to Cam. Never did she consider it was Cam answering her desperate pleas for help. Dearest mother, I'm here today to ask you, if I say no, can I choose my husband? Or have you chosen another just in case? And what does Mother Mary tell you? My child, if you say no, your life will become very ordinary, like most children in the world. However, you are free. Were you free? No. It was the illusion of it was my choice, but in the end it never was. That was never more stark than when Stephanie turned 14. Cam brought her to this motel to consummate what he called their mystical marriage. Yeah, I remember my nerves. It was so shaky, the adrenaline, it was full on. And I just stayed on the couch that night. He tried to drag me into bed, but yeah, I didn't want to budge. What happened the second time he brought you here? The second time was the time that I gave in to him. And why did you give in? Because the first time I was scolded for not letting him have sex with me. So I was scared to get in trouble again. And just laid in bed after my shower and let him do his business. Turned my head away and cried. Stephanie was brought here countless times over many years. On some occasions with other girls who were made to wait in a connecting room until they were summoned by the lecherous can. For young Stephanie, the abuse at the hands of her sister's husband was too much as she confessed to the Virgin Mary. I'm sick of my life. I really am, I'm sorry, but if you don't kill me, <laughs> if you don't kill me, then I will Re oh God. I really wanted to go at that stage. I wasn't enjoying my life, having sex with William and lying to my sister and really, really hurt me. <sighs> the abuse only stopped when at 19, Stephanie became pregnant with her son, Killian. He's one of more than 20 children known to have been sired by Cam, but Stephanie believes the true number is much higher. Killian's got probably hundreds of brothers and sisters. How do you feel about that? Oh, sad and sickening. Just, yeah, sick to my stomach. Determined Killian would not be raised in a cult, Stephanie finally found a way to turn the tables on the little pebble. He needed to be stopped, so I did what I had to do. I did want to take him down. Stephanie Henricks had been promised heaven on earth, but found herself in a special kind of hell. Stark in an isolated religious community near Nowra on the New South Wales South Coast. And at just 14, married off to a perverted and singularly unimpressive doomsday cult leader who calls himself Little Pebble. Of course, without any remorse, William Cam claims all he's ever done is follow God's orders. He needs to be stopped. Otherwise, he will just keep going until he passes on to the next life. In her book, The Messiah's Bride, author Megan Norris exposes Cam, who used the fear of damnation to tame his flock. This sex offender claimed the Virgin Mary regularly appeared and spoke to him. 
Does any part of you believe he believed it? No, I don't believe it. Basically, he used divine guidance as a license to offend. It was a convenient excuse to be able to give him access to having sex with little girls. So he was a pedophile, not a prophet. A predator and a false prophet, yes. Yeah. In 2002, unwilling to raise her young son in a cult, Stephanie finally went to police to report Little Pebble, the father of her child, accusing him of sex abuse. I did want to take him down. I wanted to stop him because he needed to be stopped, so I did what I had to do. Um, it was pretty hard and very embarrassing. I remember feeling mortified in the police station. On the 8th of August, 2002, police swooped and William Cam was taken into custody by the sex crime squad. The arresting officer was Detective Chief Inspector Peter Yeomans, now with the State Crime Command. What was his reaction when you arrested him? He's always been in denial and he still is to this day. He still thinks that he's not guilty. He still believes that he has done nothing wrong and a number of his followers are, are the same. It's, it's beyond belief, but it's, it's um, yeah, not, not, not all um, believe that he is a sex offender. But a jury did. William Cam was convicted and sent to jail for nearly a decade in 2005 for the repeated sexual abuse of Stephanie Hinrichs and another 15-year-old girl in the compound at the time. Girls who he called his queens and who he considered were his wives. In going to the police, these young women were threatened with damnation. And in Stephanie's case, she was made an outcast by her own family, with her mum Ingrid willingly appearing as a witness for William Cam. What was it like to have your mum come into that courtroom and testify against you to say that you were lying? Oh, it was heartbreaking. It was very heartbreaking. And during that period of time, it was like I'd never had a family. Everything was a lie. Mum let this happen to me. How could she? Were you convinced that your daughter was a liar? I was confused and I was, I thought, yeah, maybe she lies, yeah. This was after years of your daughter telling you, coming to you. It's hard, it's hard to understand. Yes. I, I know that, and I myself have terrible trouble to understand my time at this time. But it happened. Oh, yeah, maybe I have to work through my guilt still. What do you feel most guilty for? That I let my kids down. He was using religion in such a way that just split families, um, so it was just awful. No, I just and it continued on for many, many years. It, it, I see it as a grooming with the families to get to these children, um, and it, it's just terrible. Sorry. In Stephanie's family, Cam was more than happy to set sister against sister, first betraying Bettina with a number of secret affairs before revealing his plan for a royal harem. Did he ever tell you about his plans to take on queens? <laughs> Eventually, um, I remember being in the car with him and he goes, oh, just so ever, ever so casually, oh, I got a message from our lady and our Lord last night. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he goes, um, our Lord wants me to have more wives. And that's when my whole world fell apart. Like, literally, it was in a gazillion pieces. But Stephanie's decision to report Cam to police ultimately gave Bettina the escape she wanted but never acted on. Now divorced, today she's grateful for her little sister's bravery, for the freedom it won her and her children, including youngest with Cam, 21-year-old Maggie. What do you think would have happened if Stephanie didn't take that action? Nothing would have ever changed. He would have never been put behind bars. I think she was really strong, not only to, 
to go through with it, to make a complaint, but to go to court with all that pressure and to stand up and testify against him. I think, and then to, to be able to be as together as she is now as an adult, that she's still standing, you know, it's bizarre stuff. It is biz bizarre and beyond belief. But horrifyingly, the bizarre and unbelievable continue. With his release, Little Pebble is up to his old tricks, trying to rebuild his royal household, targeting vulnerable young women to become his new queens. So the police attended the apartment and they discovered what appeared to be a child, dressed in a sort of white nighty, clutching a child's toy, crying and in distress. William Cam, or Little Pebble, is the leader of a doomsday cult who would have followers believe it is his divine duty to repopulate the earth by taking young brides from his flock, girls God had supposedly chosen for him. The more earthly truth is Cam is a convicted child sex offender who cannot be trusted. Certainly the authorities believe the community needs ongoing protection from William Cam. On serving his jail term, Cam's release came with strict rules, known as extended supervision orders, which along with other restrictions banned him from being in the company of underage girls and using social media. But of course, Cam couldn't help himself and in 2021 he breached the orders by using Facebook to write letters to young women. One of the conditions is he can't be on social media full stop. So just being on social media, contacting anyone at all, was a concern to the police. And so he was arrested. The young women he contacted were not underage, but he did serve a year in jail for the social media breach. That breach exposed, as author Megan Norris says, his predictable and well-practiced ploy of using religion to gain access to young women. What did he say in those letters? They, they appear to be love letters, basically saying to young women that they're special and God has chosen them to be his wife or one of his queens. Disturbingly, 72-year-old William Cam was doing more than just writing to young women. At around the same time as the social media breach, police got an anonymous call expressing concern that a child was in Cam's company here at his city apartment. The alarm was raised because it seemed the child was in distress. So the police attended the apartment and they discovered what appeared to be a child dressed in a sort of white nighty, clutching a child's toy, crying and in distress. And when they searched the place, they found young, the young woman's underwear, saw evidence of that young woman staying there. And the immediate thought was she was a child and he was up to his old tricks. That child turned out to be Pearl Paz, a runaway from New Zealand. At 18, Pearl was no longer considered a child, but creepily, she was dressed to look like one. To learn Pearl was the distressed person in the apartment horrified her younger sister, Trexy. When I found out, I didn't tell my parents or anyone because I was, I didn't want to break their heart. Like, she already ran away and I didn't want them to know that she got touched by this old man. Yeah, and that just made me really angry. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pearl's family, with parents Annabelle and Rolando, are devout Catholics who moved from the Philippines to New Zealand for a better life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Much loved eldest daughter Pearl was just 15 when she first discovered the teachings of the Little Pebble online. Pearl told us that, Ma, they are very religious. They are keep on praying in the community. In fact, we are the true Catholic. And I said, what? So meaning to say we are fake. Unknown to the family, for the next three years, online and through his current wife, Sandra Castellia, Cam encouraged Pearl to join his cult. Why? Would you believe this one? 
He is not a prophet. He is a pedophile. She never listened to us. You're in danger. In late 2019, then aged 18, Pearl ran away to Australia to be with Cam. Do you just have to accept that this no. is her being an adult? It's not her choice. It's because someone dictating her, someone hypnotizing her. And I was the one who, who gave birth to her, protecting her. I and mean, it's just a one blink of an eye. She was gone and she was stolen by the cult leader, a demonic one. Our family in general is like, we're like the typical happy family. But um, I think she was just going through a, a tough time in her life. And um, she was 18 and um, I think she was turning into an adult. I just wish that before she left, I, I was there for her. I wish I could just go back in time and give her the comfort that she needed, talk things through. I really wish I could go back in time. Does he make your skin crawl? He's a child sex offender. All child sex offenders are abhorrent. Detective Chief Inspector Peter Yeomans says while Cam has not broken any laws by recruiting Pearl, he remains under close watch by police. He is classified as a very high-risk sex offender. He's got monitoring all the time. We know where he is. We know what he's doing. Um, without that, um, it would be dire. Yeah, the energy here is totally off. Stephanie Henricks and her son Killian escaped this Camberwarra compound and Little Pebbles cult 21 years ago. Stephanie's horrified other young women like Pearl Paz are again being trapped the way she once was. He knows how to speak and that's how he gets people. And he sees vulnerable people he knows how to pick the vulnerable ones. As Stephanie warns, William Cam has always been a preacher of lies. Do you think the Virgin Mary still appears here? She never did. She wouldn't come to a place like this where people get hurt and families get destroyed. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.